This week. <laughs> really? <laughs> this week, we are finally doing how we made the handshake transition in our Sam Colder on a budget video. A couple months ago, I received an email. This is pretty much what went down. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sam originally did this in his Beijing video and we just thought it was the coolest thing. So we analyzed it frame by frame and reverse engineered it so we could do it in our own video. We had a ton of comments asking how we did it. So today we are gonna show you step by step the process in After Effects on how you can make it. But first, we're gonna need to grab a few things to make this shot work. So we should be done with the basic setup. All you're gonna need is a green screen, a table of some sort, and a friend. Or a Mitchell. Oh dear, thanks. So you're gonna get three basic shots. You're gonna get one shot of you and your friend in Sam's video and ours. They were talking on the phone, blah, 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 chit-chatting. This is where you do the handshake. The second shot you're gonna need is just a close-up of your friend in the green screen. This is for editing purposes, so if you wanted to punch in or Mitch butchers a line like usual, I'm you're sorry. covered. And the final shot you need is called a clean plate. This is with nothing in it, and it's just used to kind of cover up any inconsistencies in the background and makes your life a lot easier in After Effects. One final note, we did ours right by a road here, and this is so we could do the whole car transition at the start, so it sweeps in. But that should be all for your setup. We're gonna jump into After Effects and start compositing. All right, so this is all done in Adobe After Effects. I'm not gonna show you every single little thing I did. I'm just gonna give you more of an overview and you can kind of figure it out from there. This was our project. Uh, I'll just start at the bottom and then work my way up and then you'll see all layers and kind of have a good understanding on what's going on. Uh, to start, we're gonna use the green screen shot where it's just your friend. And as you can see, this was masked out, and then I just keyed out the green screen with key light. And underneath that, I just found a graffiti texture online. The reason it's graffiti was because that's what Sam used, but I mean, if you want a brick wall or anything different, feel free to do that. These two layers are just playing normally. Hello. Hey. And it's just a straight cut, nothing fancy. Um, this is done with the main shot over here with two people in it. And all we did was punch in right on Steven. And then as you can see, I just masked out Steven. And to, in order to fill in this black space when we punch in, if I switch over here, we just used the clean plate just to fill in that background there. I also punched it in just to create a little more dramatic tension. You don't have to, you can keep it wider. So as we filled that in, I then zoomed out the shot and this is when you're gonna slide in the second person. You may have noticed that the clean plate zoomed out with it. It scales up proportionally, and that's just done by parenting the clean plate to uh, Steven's mask. So you can just take this pick whip here and drag it over and drop that on Steven's mask, and now it should scale proportionally. Okay, next up, we're gonna do this portion where we slide in the second person from the left. The Great Mountain of Knox, are you serious? Great, okay, so we're gonna need a few things. We're gonna need to mask out the main person from the green, the second person from the green screen. And once again, we're just gonna drop key light on there, select the key, uh, the green, and you can key that right out. We're also gonna bring back the graffiti texture. I just cut it out so it was on a diagonal line. And I also made a white line that kind of follows that path along there. So all of those elements, the line, the graffiti background, and who the second person is, I just parented them all to the graffiti background so you only have to move one thing. So it's a pretty quick way of navigating through After Effects. So all it's doing is just, as this scales out, it's just sliding in. So slide in the background, just like that. Um, you can also see we have a little animation going on with the line. It's just very subtle, but sometimes these things sell the effect. 
So the line simply just slides in from the top. Uh, that's just done with some position keyframes. Slides in from the top as it slides in. So it hits just at the same time. And then you'll have your nice effect. Also, you can see this is just caked in motion blur, but we can show that after. It's a really good way of disguising any inconsistencies with your effects. Okay, Great so now that we slid myself in, we are now going to just simply punch in a close up on your main person. You don't have to do this, it's just purely if this works with your video concept. I did it just because Steven had an important line, but this one, you just take your main shot. Once again, same mask. Uh, this time you're just punching in even closer and I used the clean plate to fill in any holes in the background. As you can see, so we don't see me underneath. Bro, the great mountain of knocks. You down? Of course. And you know, easy as can be, not too difficult. We then did the exact same thing with me. It's just punched in on that original close up. Uh, of me on the green screen, and then just thrown on with a graffiti layer in the background. Not too difficult. And these are just layered over top simply because I didn't want to have to cut the layers and then put them back in. Okay, so the final thing we have to do is the actual handshake transition itself. It looks like this. Let's do it. And I'm just gonna hide some layers so you guys can kind of get a better understanding of what's going on. Okay, so. So this is just a shot of the two of us together. I'm just keyed out on the green screen. And the key uh, and the clean plate is actually filling up the background uh, on any black spots on the green screen. And then you just get the graffiti over top. And this is all real time. So we're both standing there. It's not one shot was shot later. It actually needs to happen at the same time. Uh, because you need to see the hands actually grip together. You're not going to be able to do that in post unless you're a wizard. It's pretty simple. We're going to have to do something called rotoscoping though. And that is just simply cutting out the hands so we can overlay them on top of that line and on top of the graffiti background. And then you can see them together. So it would look like this, right? So just the hands. And the reason we have to rotoscope, we can't just use the green screen, is because in our shot, the green screen ends here and the actual handshake is happening off it. So we need to get the hands above the background so then we can slide in the line and the graffiti behind it. And if you guys don't actually know what a rotoscope, there are a ton of tutorials on YouTube. It's very easy to do. It's just a little tricky to understand to start. But all you're gonna do is cut out just the hands um, and then that means we can overlay them over this white bar here that I was talking about and the graffiti background. And once you do that, you're basically there. The last step I did was I pre-comped all of this, right? Made it into a new pre-comp. Uh, I'm not actually gonna do it because I have one. We should just gonna squish them all into one composition. And that is so we can do this little scale in fact, just like Sam does at the end. So we can track the hands go up and then down. The reason you would want to pre-comp something like this is because you don't want to be scaling like six different layers. It's just going to put them in one nice little layer that you can scale and everything will be proportional to it. So that's basically the effect. The only thing I'd recommend to do at the end though is just turn on this little motion blur switch and then turn it on there and it's gonna make a huge difference in actually making this look legit. A good idea after doing this pan up and pan down is to transition into a shot with similar motion. So like in Sam's video and our recreation of his video, we used a shot of a zipper on a bag, but it could be anything you want. So that was the handshake transition tutorial. I hope you guys liked it. Obviously you didn't go too in depth on anything, but I hope it was enough you could understand what was going on. If you try it out yourself on any of your own videos, send them to us, we'd love to see it. Or if you have any questions about anything we did in the video, we'll try and see if we can help you in the comments below. We're gonna be doing more tutorials just like this every so often on our channel. They're not gonna replace the Out of 52 series, they'll just be kind of in the middle of the week. So let us know if you have any suggestions on topics we should do a tutorial about. It doesn't just have to be things like After Effects, it could be like a camera rig or mic settings or anything like that or if there was an effect we did in a previous video you really enjoyed, 
we might be able to explain how we did that too. Uh, if you like the music in this video or the Sam Colder in a budget video we showed, that was all done through Epidemic Sound. It's an amazing service. They have thousands and thousands of songs. We just love using their music because it's so easy. If you use this link right here, it'll give you a 30 day free trial on us and you'll help support our channel, but also get some pretty sweet songs. We'll see you guys next week as per usual when Steven and Mitchell turn 19. <laughs>